everybody. Um, thanks a lot uh, for having us here after winning uh, Slash Shanghai. It's great to be here, and thanks a lot for the Slash team for inviting us here. Um, there should be a slide before that. Anyway, uh, so let me dive right into it. Uh, Liquis, uh, we um, digitize accounts receivables, accounts payables uh, to make this asset class accessible to institutional investors and provide cash liquidity to small, medium enterprises so they don't have to wait 60 days and longer for getting paid. Why are we doing this? We have 43 trillion US dollars in outstanding accounts receivables any given day worldwide, and only 3 trillion in liquidity is provided by traditional incumbents such as banks, leaving us with a market opportunity of 40 trillion, which we aim to unlock in, in the currently locked capital and focusing on a niche market of food exports from Europe to China and vice versa, because we are based in Shanghai and we have an existing partner network that helps us tap into this market. Do we have market validation? We sure do. These are invoice uh, financing platforms, and as you can see, exponential growth. So it's not only a massive market, it's also a growing market, whereas we focus on a very niche market of fast-moving consumer goods. How are we doing this? We have a very easy-to-use web interface, so as a small-medium enterprise, you go to our website, you register, upload your invoice, and we issue the digital asset, the token, on your behalf. Why is blockchain important for you as an investor? Simply because this token is instantly tradable, so it streamlines the securitization process, so a secondary market um, is av available for institutional investors. That is not the case at the moment, and it solves and mitigates the trust and transparency issue in international trade, which you currently have between buyers and sellers. <clears throat> Business model is very straightforward, so we charge a service fee for this um, uh, operating this technical infrastructure of 1%, so a 1 million euro invoice nets us 10,000 euros and uh, leads us to revenue projections of 11 million by 2020. And we'll go to market, as I said, um, through partners in uh, FMCG and the uh, existing network in automotive, and our competitors mainly focus on loans and uh, therefore higher risk asset classes. We are the only solution focusing on accounts receivables payables. Therefore, we have a first to market advantage and blockchain has the two competitive advantages of uh, solving the trust and transparency issue between buyers and sellers, <coughs> as well as streamlining the securitization process. It's very easy to use and since it's a marketplace, it also has competitive pricing. Our team has over uh, 50 years combined experience in uh, launching digital products, and uh, I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. The final round of questions, please. Yeah. <clears throat> cool. But I mean, every time you introduce a new uh, financial product like this, it requires some experience and volume because money starts flowing to it. And although now you do it based on blockchain as well, which should increase, increase trust, I think that might mean that you will have a double gain trust issue until it's really out there. So my question is, what are the things that need to happen before this can really start growing? So actually we use a, a standard a securitization fr a framework of the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. So something institutional investors are already, they already known. So actually for us it doesn't matter if it's a token or not. We actually only use the blockchain because uh, it cuts out the intermediaries. Yeah? So since it's always accounts receivables, accounts payables, we can have a standard legal framework and um, we don't need uh, intermediaries like custodian banks because it's already distributed over or like uh, as per se with the blockchain. So um, it actually increases efficiency and it still has the same legal construct. And for us as a platform operator, it doesn't matter if it's a security or not because we only target institutional investors and not retail investors. And you said the securitization model, that's already, that's a standard one. That's what you said. That's a standard one, yeah. But at the moment, you had just have a lot of intermediaries, which we believe uh, that actually the blockchain technology streamlines and makes more efficient. So it cuts costs and actually, yeah, it's, it's just faster. And, and actually, how ready are you? Um, so we have an MVP and a first customer, uh, which we are currently um, like uh, progressing or like conducting the business, the first proof of consent. Yeah. <clears throat> Q 
Can you give us a little bit of background of yourself and the management team? Yes, um, for me it's the second startup in, in, in financial technology. My first one was in mobile payments 2011-12. I raised uh, equity crowdfunding twice successfully for that, but too early, wrong market, mm, it was in Germany. And uh, the management team actually, as you can see, like Florian and uh, Armin are actually managing partners of MediaMan. It's a German digital agency with 140 employees worldwide, so they are a minority shareholder and quite, quite active, so we have a lot of support in UI, UX. Uh, we have SOS Ventures as the, as the first uh, VC investors, and actually Simon Capron is the former CIO of uh, City Portugal, uh, helping us as an advisor and investor. We have some other um, uh, uh, advisors and investors as well. Actually, uh, just recently, uh, Emurgo, which is a part of Cardano, invest, uh, invested in us or confirmed an investment in us as well. Thank you. And we are out of time. And this was our final pitch. So thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>